Probably my most asked question to do with academic writing and the dissertation process is, Amina, how do I write a literature review? How do I write a first class level literature review? And I've battled with trying to find an amazing and just the, the best way of explaining it and the best way of structuring it for you guys to understand. And I developed a six part step-by-step -step scaffolded template and this is something I'm going to be going through in today's video I've got it here and I'm going to be showing it to you on screen as well so you can see I'll leave the link for it down below as well if you're interested in picking it up but essentially I've built a six step guide and this takes you from the minute you get your literature review title and the topic till the point that you actually submit and you've got a finished literature review and whilst there are so many resources out there on literature reviews and how to write a good one I think take it back to basics and I haven't seen this being done before I haven't seen the step-by-step -step scaffolded guide the way that you know when we were in primary school when we were really young we had a guide to ha for how to write sentences you start with this you finish with this and this is the middle and here are the connectives I've done that with a literature review so I'm going to be going through each of those six steps and you know if you're not interested in getting it you can still pick up all the information from this video so hopefully it could help you either way okay step number one is you want to think of ideas so here is where the brainstorming really begins you've got your title you've got your topic and you want to think about what ideas are there that I can delve into so this is where you want to really define what your literature review is going to be about what area do you really want to target because if you make your topic too wide there's going to be too much information and your review is going to lack depth it's going to be broad um, talking about so many different things and not really accomplishing a, a proper critical discussion. If it's too narrow, you're not giving yourself enough space or enough room to discuss around the subject and you probably won't, you'll probably really struggle to be honest if it's narrow. If it's wide, you'll find it really easy because there's so much information. But if it's too narrow, you're going to really struggle finding papers. So step one is where you brainstorm. You think, right, I'm talking about this topic. What ideas can I discuss what do I find interesting and what is being spoken about today in the research field in that area what do we not know what could we know more about and that is where you kind of brainstorm so in the template I have included four ideas four spaces for ideas where essentially you want to brainstorm and do a lot of reading you're kind of reading around your subject you're having a look at the at news if it's something more relevant online you want to speak to people in your field your supervisor and pick out four kind of key um, areas of your research and actually those four key areas could end up being different paragraphs within your review as well now stage number two is where you select your sources and what I've got here is I've got a critical reading summary and I've got that for five papers and I mean you're more than welcome to of course read more than five papers but I want when you're reading for you to really think about the critical aspect of it and the reason why I'm saying this is because if you're someone that wants to you know achieve a first class this is something that you need to start doing really early on the biggest mistake that students do is they come to write the literature review they're writing away and then they're like hmm what's critical what's critical reading what can I add that's critical and they're trying to add critical thinking into it critical thinking isn't something you add it's something that you are actively doing you're reading critically whilst you're you know getting your sources whilst you're getting ideas and then when you write that kind of comes into the the, the, you know, the the pros as you're going along. It's not something that you like go, oh, let's add some critical thinking over there. And it's, that's not how it, I mean, it's really obvious when that's done like that. So the reason why I've added this on really early on, stage two is selecting your sources, is because it means that when you're picking your sources and you're actually doing that reading, you're reading critically. So you're not going to have to go back again and try to critique again. So some, the, some things I've included are things like, um, significance like why does this research matter why is it important and who does it matter to um things like what is striking about the tables um things like why did my author include the different graphs the different data were there any limitations or setbacks um what were the objectives uh, when did the research take place how did the author collect the data these are all things that when you're reading you pick those 
point out of your text um, or your research papers that you're reading and you might think hmm they've included this graph or they've included this data it doesn't quite match up with this one or it does or whatever it picks out and that is how you're picking out some critical thinking it makes you're actually thinking critically and I've got this for five papers then stage three is to narrow it down. You know, you've got your information, you've got your, your reading, and now you want to narrow it down and find the focus. What is your focus? What are you really, really focusing on? What is the theme that's gonna be running throughout your literature review? And then so another point that I've asked here is what are some generalized limitations or weaknesses that you have found from the reading? And lastly, what are the groups that you've narrowed down your reading in? So when you've been reading your, your, your text, um, if it, whether it's your articles, whether it's research papers, whether it's you've been speaking to people, regardless of what, what your topic is, what are some themes that you think you want to delve into in the review? And this is most likely going to form your paragraphs. So when you start off, you know, you have your introduction and then you've got maybe like three or four paragraphs. What are those paragraphs? That is where kind of narrowing it down and getting that focus comes from. Then stage four is building a mind map. So this is completely blank on this page and I actually have a bit of a, a mind map here that's a bit of an example for you to see. But essentially you want to think about how can this issue be addressed? How can you take your topic and address it in a way that is um, original? So some things that I want to, th to think about when, when trying to make this mind map are things like what theories help us to understand the issue that you're looking at? Um, where can we look for better answers or solutions? Um, how is it currently being addressed? What is the issue of the thing that you're looking at? Why is it important? Who is it important to? And what methods have been used to investigate this um, so far? Uh, what are the motivations? What are disadvantages? Why should we not be satisfied with current approaches? So I've put, out, put, put down quite a few prompts for you to think about why this topic is important um, and have a bit of a mind map. So you're now putting, you've done your reading, so you have the background information, so you can actually answer these questions. And then you're now trying to build a mind map of what is going on exactly within your field, what is going on within the literature that you've just read, and how can you then group this together into some something that is um, a discussion point. The next topic is, uh, the next stage even, is stage five, and that is the planning stage. And this is where you create an outline. And this is, you know, you've got the information, it's all here, it's all here. And now you want to create an outline for your literature review before you start writing. So I've got the topic, the, to the topic, so what, you write that down. Then the introduction. So what is going to form your introduction? What are you going to open up this literature review by saying? Then you've got the main body, and I've included five, well, six points actually, um, but it really is up to you, it depends on how long the review is. I would suggest that introduction 10 to 15, 20% max, conclusion 10%, and then middle should be the main bulk, so about 70% should be in the middle. Within that, if you have five main points, that can be broken down into like 15% each, 10% each, for example. So it's really important that you think about um, what your main themes are and that's something that you have thought about already if you're following this step-by-step -step guide um, so all you need to do is when you're planning is just writing main point number one um, talk about the history of pregnancy then number two talk about malpractice in it then number three speak about what's being done then number four so yeah, you've got your main points you know what the structure is going to be and it helps to look at it as well because it means that you might think hmm that doesn't quite make sense or like I'm not included I haven't included this thing or that this is missing or actually to be able to explain point four I need to know point two I have to have explained something else so it makes you think a little bit more and then last but not least is stage six which is the writing and the editing stage and here I've included something that I've called an argument map and that is a map, it's a bit like P-E-E-L, you know at school when you learn point, evidence, explanation, then link it. It's a bit like that but this is in the academic sense and I've called it an argument map. Um, and so I've given a structure of an example of one paragraph of an argument map and then obviously you can go and develop that into more depth. So the opening significant statement, what are you starting with? That is your opening statement. Then number two, expand so you know you started off by saying this is the issue just expand it a little bit so maybe two or three more sentences about that 
Then you want evidence and you want analysis to link your ideas. So now you've spoken about it, bring some of your reading in, bring some of that evidence in that you've been doing before and link your ideas up. So you now want to expand your argument and start to critique. So speaking about limitations, what's missing in the field, maybe any methods that have been used or haven't been used, and really bring that all together to make sure that you're starting an argument and really um, going into depth about that particular significant statement. And then last but not least is a linker sentence. And I always say that you need to use a linker sentence at the start and the end of every every single paragraph. Um, so linker sentences is a sentence that, and I've done a short about it by the way, so go and check it out, it was last week. Um, the, a linker sentence is a sentence that just kind of preempts what's coming up and kind of concludes what's just been said. So you might say something like, right, as a result of this, which you just was, you know, what you were just speaking about, there's also, and then you're kind of linking into what's going to happen next. So none of your paragraphs should be abrupt they should never just end. I should know as a reader what's going to be coming in the next paragraph, what is going to be discussed next. And so having linker sentences is really important and it really helps flow as well. And then I've got a checklist over here. So I've got a checklist of all the kind of things that you need to look for when writing in your introduction, your middle, the body, and also the end. So just a few points. Um, and then lastly, I thought it'd be helpful because not everyone has this and concerns me a bit that not everyone has this. It's a mark scheme. Um, so you, know, you can zoom in, I can, you can see it, but this is a mark scheme. And I've just taken it from, I can't remember what university it was, but it's a general, it's one of the top universities. And it's an undergraduate mark scheme for levels four to six. So I've made sure that it's not, so four to six is year one, year two, and year three of university. So I've made sure to make it general and not just for year six, for example. Um, level six, <laughs> for example, which is third year. And it's given, pointers for all the different categories of what a marker would be looking for. So for example, um, research, subject knowledge, critical analysis, testing problem skills and problem solving skills, experimentation, um, communication, academic integrity, so things like referencing is correct, um, collaborative working, um, data literacy, so you've been able to present your data correctly, things like that. So I, I thought it would just be handy to have that there because like I said, not everyone has a mark scheme and I find that actually knowing what they expect of you is really helpful. And one thing you can do if you print this out or even if you use it on like a tablet or something, is just highlighting. So let's say um, research, it says here, extensive independent relevant research, evidence by quality and quantity used, um, and so you might be like, okay, you know, what? I've done lots of research. I'm green. I'm good with that. But I haven't done lots of critical analysis. So I'm, I'm red with that. So just having a bit of a like play on kind of where you think you sit or even giving this to a supervisor or someone who can read your literature review before you submit it and saying, look, can you, do you mind telling me where I fall? Or you can send it to the page doctor, which is my um, academic um, company which whereby we actually look at mark schemes if you give us your own one as well and we can say right you fall you most likely fall within this this kind of bracket and we can give you feedback and help you improve that as well so yeah anyway if you want this template I will leave it down below I'm so proud of it I, I genuinely feel like developing these templates and I have a ton of other ones as well um, has been one of the like most rewarding things that I've done in the past couple of weeks slash months and it genuinely is because it, scaff it really scaffolds it for people and really scaffolds it for you. And I've had so many comments from people saying that I've got ADHD or I've got um, dyslexia and it really helps for me to actually see and have like step one, you do this and step one, you, step two, you do that. And you know what? It's not just if you have ADHD. I, I find this kind of thing so helpful, just having a structure and just having like a pattern. Cause now, you know what? Next time you have to write a review, you know exactly how it works. And it's something that isn't taught. So, you know, I'm teaching it to you basically. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to follow me to see more from me. And if you have any other ideas for templates that you wanna see or any other ideas for um, how to write X thing, let me know and I'll see you guys in my next video.